Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on another Reactor live stream. Uh, this live stream session, we're looking at OneNote, the bridge between digital and analog creativity, and we are joined today with Matthew Gilbertson, who's going to take us through some tips and tricks and share all things OneNote. Um, if you do have any questions, please pop them in our Q&A box below, um, and Matthew will answer them throughout the session. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Matthew. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you, Nadia, and welcome to you all, wherever you happen to be. Uh, it's a very warm welcome from Brisbane in Australia. It's a mild, sunny afternoon here. I uh, hope you're experiencing uh, good conditions where you are, wherever that may be. Uh, I'd love to spend some time talking to you this afternoon about OneNote, one of my favourite topics, and my other favourite topic to talk to people about, which is creativity. Um, in a world which is full of discussion around automation, um, AI, Human creativity is a unique feature and one that never before has been so important for us to develop, in my opinion. It's also the feature which sets humans apart from every other living being. Um, living things in general, they make things, but they do it on instinct. Whereas humans, we have the ability to do it creatively and it sets us apart. Uh, fostering creativity has some added benefits and to introduce this topic, I, I wonder whether some of these questions uh, might be ones that you've posed before. Um, so would you like to improve your memory? Uh, what about boosting your feelings of well-being? Particularly important, uh, depending upon the state of lockdown that you find yourselves in with the COVID pandemic around the world, what, what can creativity do to help me feel good? Are you an ideas person? Are you effective at capturing those ideas and testing them out? How can we capture our ideas more effectively? What about a surefire way to achieve your goals 42% more often? And would you like to be more productive? And I haven't ever met anyone and that hasn't told me that they want to be more productive. Creativity is linked and fostering creativity is linked to our being able to answer any of those questions we've just pondered. But when we think about creativity, what is it that we're actually talking about? Well, I'm talking here today about the creative process, not an act of creating something, but a creative process. And this starts in the mind. You know, ideas are never well formed to begin with. They start out as vague concepts. And our ability to generate visual thinking and visual thoughts is critical to our being able to process ideas and, and start on this creation process. So being able to visualize concepts in our mind is the beginning of this process. But then we have to find a way to take those ideas and concepts and test them and refine them. Do they solve the problem that we're encountering? Do they make the contribution to our lives that we were hoping for? We need to be able to explore our ideas so that we can evaluate them and move them forward. So how? How do we take these concepts, these thinking that we have on a daily basis, those ideas that wake you up in the middle of the night, or maybe like a lot of people, you have them in the shower or wherever your idea space happens to be, how do we turn them into something else? And so the key here, the key thing here is that creativity requires us to stop passively consuming information. Now, this is really important because our current world and technology environment is built on our becoming addicted to consuming passive content, being entertained, being mildly humoured and wasting an awful lot of time. The key to fostering creativity is our ability to start actively engaging with ideas as we encounter them, when we choose to, but this active engagement requires something from the human and it requires a pen for us to be good at it. Creativity fostered in the human requires a pen. How so? Well, neurologist Judy Willis, this is a quote from her, she explains it this way. The practice of writing uh, can enhance the brain's intake, processing, retaining and retrieving of information. It promotes the brain's attentive focus. It boosts long-term memory, illuminates patterns, gives the brain time for reflection, 
And when well guided, it's a source of conceptual development and stimulus of the brain's highest cognition. Our deepest thinking is linked to our ability to write, but not only write, also to draw. And Da Vinci, he wrote that the more we try and describe something in words, we can often confuse people. So in, a, in, a, in addition to being able to write something, it's good for us to be able to make a drawing, as he called it, or to illustrate what we're trying to do. So interestingly, the research tells us that in the human mind, drawing and writing are the same basic principle. And just back to this point here about writing and the brain, the average human remembers, understands and conceptualizes between 10 and 60% better with a pen than they possibly can with a keyboard. Now, it's important for us to recognize this because our modern world focuses on keyboard and touch use of devices, but that is not where human creativity lies. We think and learn differently when using a pen uh, than a keyboard. And so this is an excerpt of some research which I can share with you later, but it's a research uh, done in uh, 2016 that talks about when writing uh, with the hand or using a keyboard, how does the brain actually function? And the conclusion was very compelling that the brain behaves very differently when writing or drawing using a pen when compared to typing on a keyboard. Significant difference. Now, if we just think about this, typing is actually, and the typewriter was invented as a tool of duplication, not a tool of creation. Yeah? Typing requires us to think in linear, standard, formatted ways. Whereas using a pen to draw or to write frees the mind to think conceptually in open space without linear uh, constraints, without formatting constraints. Hand-eye coordination, full language skills and the full visual process processing capabilities of the brain are opened when I use a pen. But there's a cost to using a pen, uh, particularly if I'm using paper. It's hard work using a pen. Yeah, I've really got to think deeply. I've got to be in the mood. I can be easily distracted out of deep thinking. And again, our modern world does not allow us to think deeply often. In fact, research tells us that it takes approximately 23 minutes and 17 seconds to gain full focus, particularly after being distracted on a particular topic. Uh, the average information worker currently switches tasks every three minutes. How much deep thinking is going on in the course of our work days? But it's here in this deep thinking state that creativity lives. So if you need to, turn off your technology, grab a pen and paper and go away and create. Draw, write, create. But there's a problem with creating on physical paper. And the problem can be defined in this statistic here for you, 76 hours. 76 hours per year is the average amount of time that information workers spend searching through their notes for information. We call it the cost of disorganization. So if, on average, if you use pen and paper to create because you need a pen to create, then you're spending two weeks a year just looking for information that you wrote somewhere. Not processing it, just looking for it. Yeah. Couple that with a statistic that tells us that the average information worker spends about 30 hours a week just checking messages, not actioning them we can begin to see the challenge that we face when it comes to fostering creativity. So here's my first recommendation for you. If you want to become more creative, if we want to have some of the benefits achieved by answering these questions, there's a very distinct formula we need to follow. And the first part of that formula is that you need to get a device with a digital pen. If you don't have a digital pen on your computing device, you are missing out on potential creativity opportunities. And you're also significantly missing out on productivity. Now I'm gonna show you how OneNote is the bridge towards finding that productivity for yourselves. Yep. So I'm gonna step straight into a demonstration of a way to create content using a pen that we can then transition to other formats so that we can publish it. I'm skipping through my, you're looking in my live notebooks here now. So I'm going into my uh, training session notebook, and this is some demo content that we use in our training sessions. I'm going to use one of the legible articles that we have on file here. This is an article that my, my co uh, colleague wrote on why we need to train people to use uh, Windows in particular, or anything for that matter. And the same thing holds true when it comes to becoming creative. If you want to be creative, 
training is essential. Practice is essential. And in my world of teaching people uh, to be creative and to be productive, uh, there is an inescapable requirement to achieving that. I need to be, I need to gain knowledge and I also need to practice my skills. You can't be good at anything without those two things. So my colleague wrote this article. This is actually my brother who wrote this article. He wrote this article on a plane. Have you ever typed on a plane? Have you ever tried to get your keyboard out and your laptop and sit there with the tray table down? And, and now I haven't been on the plane for six months thanks to COVID, so that's a distant memory. But typing in a cramped space is not a great activity. Whereas holding a Surface device or something like a Surface like this flat and being able to write on it as if it were a sheet of paper, that doesn't take up a lot of space. It's very convenient to be able to do in cramped spaces like buses, public transport, aeroplanes is another example of that. So Brett took about 45 minutes to write this article. Great, deep thinking, best quality composition. Did you know that you compose better when you handwrite than when you type? Now thinking about, yes, it will probably take you longer to type to write this article initially than it will to type it. Even if you did type this article, would you still have to proofread it? Yeah, of course you would. Now using OneNote, we can actually turn that process of creating this content and turning it into something else a little bit more quickly. So this is the process that I go through to create content in OneNote. So we've got an idea that's been handwritten into digital paper. We're going to now turn it into published content. The first thing I like to do is to take a copy of that page. I always like to keep the handwritten notes on file. A reason we keep those handwritten notes on file is that handwriting and drawing encodes your memory. And when the author looks back at what they've drawn or what they've written, it can actually take them back to the very place that they were. It's a piece of the memory puzzle. It helps them to recall not just their thinking pattern, but where they were, what was going on around them. So if your role involves, for example, uh, investigation uh, or inspection, being able to hand write and draw notes is critical to your being able to recall what you saw of an incident. So I've copied the page and now I'm going to paste that page back into the same location. And you can see here we've set this up for illustration purposes. I actually have two pages and I'm using the desktop version of OneNote, by the way, uh, but I'm using two pages here that are the same content. Now, if you can see this on the projected screen, um, one of these has lines and one doesn't. I'm going to open OneNote a second time here and split screen it. So we can see these two pages side by side. Let's make these both full screen so we get some evidence of what's going on here. You can see here I have the same article twice on the page. Now on one of these articles, I'm going to do under edit, under a convert, ink to text. OneNote has an incredible ability to convert your handwriting into text. And here is that converted page. So on the left, I have my original handwritten content. On the right, I now have a copied, an automatically copied transcript of what we've written. Now I can proofread and edit my original content against my handwritten notes. So this is now a much more powerful um, a review process or proofreading process because it's against my original thinking that I'm doing this. From a time perspective, as I said, it took Brett about half an hour to 45 minutes to write this article on a, on a plane. It took him less than a minute to convert that document into text, but then less than 10 minutes to turn that article in OneNote into this here, which is now a neatly typed up and partially formatted document. Now we can simply copy all of this text out of the document and we can go to Word or PowerPoint or Excel or somewhere else. And we can continue this publishing process. We can continue this content creation process by now stepping into our styles and our actual formatting of this content. There you go, copy the. That was an interesting reaction. The demo guides have got something interesting happening there for me. Let's just see if we can do this again. Let's copy that out. There we go, that's what I was after, not the handwriting, but the text. So we've now done a process, a creation process that's included. 
quality, deep thinking and content creation because I wrote it into OneNote. Why is it better to write into OneNote than into paper? Yeah. Um, I'll come back to the question, by the way, Kerry, uh, towards, yeah, um, towards the end of this session. Um, just back to my thoughts, so I got distracted there, but we've created content using deep thinking and a pen, the best way to get quality thinking done. Uh, just to talk about this a little bit more importantly or a little bit more dynamically, what happens when I handwrite instead of type is that when I handwrite, I force my brain to pre-process all of the available information. It's different to when I speak and it's also different to when I type. When I type, it's a mind dump. The processing happens after. The same actually happens when I speak. When I speak, I listen to what I say and I reprocess and re-engage. Handwriting is different. All the work is done up front. Yep. So I've handwritten my article. I've used OneNote to convert it to text. I've used OneNote to format it. Yep. And then I've been able to publish it into Word onto any other Office application and I can take that further and turn it into a published article. That's the way we actually create all of our content. From storyboarding videos to PowerPoint slides, everything is storyboarded in ink in OneNote first. And I'll give you another example of that. So in our training notebook, uh, under our Windows 10 headings, which obviously because I'm presenting, I can't see right now. Let's search for it instead. Oops. Awesome, here we go. Now, my handwriting is atrocious. I make, uh, yeah, I, my grade four teacher was very disappointed in my abilities. They haven't got better as I've got older. Uh, but this is an article that I wrote, and this is actually our training run sheet for Windows 10. Now, one of the other benefits of uh, content creation or creating content or creating anything in OneNote is the ability to share your notes. Yeah. So shared creation happens because I'm using a digital medium in OneNote. And so I wrote this article with the intent to have my colleagues review it with me and that I, I wanted them to make contributions to this content so that I could then go and publish it. But I actually ran into a problem here. So this is one of, you can see the different styles of writing here, right? So this is two different contrib contributors to this page. Now here's the, here's the barrier. I wrote here quicker and easier mental switching between tasks. That's, I can read that because I wrote it. But my colleague has got a problem here. What does that say? Legibility is obviously a great thing if you are using a pen. But in order to help this creative process, I did the same to this article that I just showed you before. I turned it into handwriting and spent time editing it, proofreading it. And now that it's become legible, look what my colleagues have done. They've come through and marked up over the top of it in ink. And then I've converted their contents to, to from ink to text. And now here's our fully published run sheet ready to, and we publish this regularly into Word documents and edit it. We've put it into PowerPoint slide decks before, but this is another example of using ink to tap into the creative human mind and turn it into a digital format whilst reducing duplication of effort and workload. How long would it have taken me to retype up this information as opposed to converting and editing it? There's a significant difference. We cut that reprocessing time in thirds. A third of the time it would take me to retype it happens when I simply convert and proofread it. Now I want to show you a shortcut to this process too. If you happen to know that Word is the final format that you want to get to, there's another step that we can go through here when it comes to OneNote to take quality thinking and turn it into digital content, published content. What I can actually do is I can go under the file tab in OneNote, I can export a page, a section or a notebook. In this case, case we're going to say a page and we're going to export it into Word and hit export. Now we'll give that a name called Y Train and we'll say save and we are just now going to save that document into Word. I've taken this handwritten page and published it into Word. So let's now go and open that document in Word. It's going to open in a second for us. Let's split screen this again so we can see the importance of what we're looking at here. 
what has exporting this page, this OneNote page to Word done using that export button? File, export to Word, it's turned it into text. So now I can do my proofread and edit and format straight in Word. I don't have to do that in OneNote first. If I know that my final format is going to be Word, I can take that content and I can turn it into a Word document for my proofread and edit. This is another great way that we can take digital content and turn it into or created content, ink created content, analog created content and turn it into a quality digital outcome by saving time, less duplication of effort. So that's my number one tip for you with regards to enhancing your creative process. Start writing into OneNote. Start drawing into OneNote. Here's an example of a mind map in OneNote for you to look at and to think about. Uh, I didn't do this mind map. This is again a colleague of mine, but I want you to see one of the advantages of digital paper over physical paper is that we have an unlimited canvas in OneNote. There's no page restrictions. There's no size restrictions. And so as I zoom out into this mind map, you can start, start to see how expansive that it becomes. We've got unlimited space here to expand our ideas out and to let our thinking flood the area available with different concepts and ideas. This is a really powerful tool. You'll also see here that in this tool, we're able to bring different sorts of content. Here's a video in the OneNote page. We have, uh, we have ink in the OneNote page. We have text in OneNote pages. We have unique content. Yeah. Again, that question I'm going to come back to KS a little bit later. Can you export sketches? Anonymous says, well, export to what is the question? So, um, you know, if you're sketching something, you want to publish it into an art program. There are ways that we can do that uh, because we can export to PDF um, in from OneNote as well. So that's something we can do. So yes, we can export uh, sketches, but probably a, a question I'll ask back is what do you want to export to? Where do you want those sketches to end up? Um, and our philosophy is, and when we teach people to do this from their workflow perspective, you can create anything in OneNote and get it into almost any other location. Um, if you are sketching plans, for example, we might use a different tool for that. If it's something that needs to be straight lined, vector type drawings or dimension type drawings, maybe something different depending upon your purpose. But a general sketch, absolutely we can export from OneNote. So we've talked about the ability to ink in OneNote and convert it to text. We are now talking about the ability to enhance our ink because we can bring in content from other locations. Right, so you can see introducing Office there. So we're bringing text based content that we've got from the web into here. In fact, we can insert spreadsheets, tables, video and audio recordings. We can ex import a whole lot of things into uh, OneNote. From a note taking perspective, I want to show you something else. So and I'll give you a demonstration of how I use OneNote in meetings to, to reduce my duplication of effort in meetings in just a second. But I'm just going to skip into a um, into a meeting and this is a meeting. I sit on some boards for some supporting organizations. So this is a board meeting that I went to. Here's the rough agenda that I printed into OneNote so we can print to OneNote as well. But what I have here is the audio recording that I um, that I recorded into OneNote. Now when I hit playback and hit play on this recording, what's going to happen here is I jump 10 foot. Excuse the noise here when I do this. I'm just going to uh, see playback. What I want you to see here, and it's possible this won't demo very well. What I want to see here with you is that, when, yeah, when I fast forward this recording, can you see how the timestamp here says 30 minutes and five seconds, and I have a particular piece of the text highlighted here. What's happening? OneNote timestamps my handwritten notes against the recording. Do you understand that? So that, for example, if I wrote, I wrote point of order here, right? What did that act? What was I thinking when I wrote that? If I tap this link, there's a play symbol that will appear. Next, not let me tap it. So that's interesting. I've got uh, a little bit of a OneNote. Okay. See the two play symbols that have appeared here. If I click on this play symbol, what you'll notice is that the audio recording goes straight 
to the point in the recording when I wrote that note. So if you're going to lectures or if you're in a meeting you really want to remember, why would I think, why would I write down everything that I heard? You become a stenographer when you do that, you don't really retain a lot. What would happen to my note taking ability, to my memory and my ability to go back and review if I recorded the meeting? And I just write down the things that struck me as being really important or things that I wanted to remember. Would that enhance my note taking ability? Would it give me a better result? Uh, absolutely it would. So let's bridge that for a second into using OneNote to take more effective meeting notes. And I always have a question that I ask people when it comes to uh, meetings, because meetings are actually a central hub of group creativity. We get together with a group of colleagues because we want their creative knowledge collectively applied to the topic at hand. So I'm not sure that we think of meetings as creative places. Often we think of them as places to be bored and to waste time. And certainly no one has ever asked for longer, uh, more often meetings. So how could we use OneNote to turn them to, to turn our meetings into more creative, shorter, sharper experiences? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do that. Let's step you through this process together. I'm going to pick a notebook that I want to take my notes in. Pick a section and add a brand new page. So I've got a blank piece of paper ready to take notes into for this meeting. I'm going to populate the information for this meeting into this page without duplicating effort. And to do that, I'm going to use the home tab. I'm going to go to the meetings tab. So here is my meetings for the day. Straight out of Outlook, OneNote integrates with Outlook, right? And I can see my meetings. And I'm going to bring into this page the information for this meeting by simply hitting the drop down menu, meeting details, and picking on the meeting that I want. I can also pick meetings from another day if I want to here. Into this page pre-populates the title and any content for this meeting. I have a link to the Outlook item here ready to go to take me back to the uh, meeting request in Outlook. I can see my participants here. What was the invitation message? Here it is, ready to go as well. I've set up my page ready to take notes in this meeting. And um, I've got three rules that we teach people when it comes to more effective meetings that can help you shorten and sharpen and make more creative the meetings that you go to. And we'll write these down. Now you'll notice that I take notes in meetings in pen, very rarely on a keyboard. Why would I do this in pen? Well, I've already told you, the pen is the creative tool of the human mind. It helps me focus, it helps me remember, it helps me think. So why would I go to a keyboard if I could go to a pen? If I'm, uh, and so to help me have more effective meetings, the first thing we need to consider about our meetings is, uh, do they have a purpose? What do I mean by the purpose of a meeting? Well, two questions I want you to ask yourselves here. Why am I going to this meeting? And what do I expect to get out of it? And if I haven't answered those two questions, I probably don't have a strong purpose for this meeting. And by the way, the first Tuesday of the month is not a purpose for a meeting. It's a purpose to waste time, yeah? Um, getting the agenda as you walk into the meeting means that you don't yet have a purpose for it. How can you possibly bring your creative energies, yeah, to the meeting if you don't know what's going to be discussed? Now, some of us are good at ad-libbing and thinking on the spot, but is that really the most effective way to get team contributions to a meeting together? Yeah? So we want to define the purpose for a meeting before we get there. Now, my second rule of meetings, now this rule applies to meetings when we're physically in the same location. It does not apply to meetings when I'm uh, remote like I am today with you. But my second rule of shorter, sharper, more effective meetings is that I don't allow for raised screens whoops, in a meeting room. Why would we not let people sit at laptops in a meeting room if we wanted shorter, sharper, more effective meetings? Well, the first reason is that nobody can resist the distraction of a raised screen. As soon as my laptop screen is in front of me, I will not focus on the meeting at hand. And you will, we've all had it, right? We've heard our name and we've gone, oh, uh, uh, what was that? What, what, was, what was that about? Sorry, I missed the question. Yeah, Distraction happens for people sitting behind laptops. But psycholo psychologically, there's also something very important going on here. If we sit behind raised screens in front of an audience, we do not have trust if we're in the same room together. We do not have transparency and we do not have openness. So again, 
A critical way to become more creative is by getting a device that goes flat on a table. I'm not saying no screens in a meeting room. I'm saying no raised screens. And if you can put your device flat on the table, now you've got a Lenovo Yoga, a HPX 360, a Surface Pro, a Surface Book, um, a Surface Go, you can get the screen flat on the table and that is an effective way to have honest, transparent, open communication in a meeting. And by using your pen, you'll be more focused and more deeply creative in the content that you're writing and thinking about. And so now we're creating good content using a pen in our meetings. And so the third way that we're going to enhance our meetings is by making sure that we take action, that we take action on our meetings before we leave the room. Not tomorrow, not next week when I get back to this meeting and, and, and type everyone out a, a neat list of the things that we agreed to. We need to share the actions live. And this is another benefit of OneNote. And this is how OneNote can help me take advantage of digital ink and turn it into quality creation that actually results in an outcome. Here's two ways. Having written down my three outcomes from this meeting, I'm going to lasso the first one. And under the home tab, I'm going to assign this a tag. We have a list of predetermined tags. I'm going to simply use the to do tag and you can see a checkbox has appeared against my number one item purpose. I've tagged that information. Why is that important? Well, when I navigate away from this page, I can go to the find tags page and I can look at this later. If you haven't seen the tag summary in OneNote before, here's a couple of quick points for you. It, you can you should group tags by name. I only want to show the unchecked items. I'm going to hide the in attendance ones, but you can see here that this is a presentation I do a bit and we've got the same thing tagged a number of times. When I hover over these tags, look at what they tell me. They tell me when they were created. I can also determine where do I want to search. Right? Now I can search section, notebooks, all my notebooks at once. I can narrow down my search to suit. When I click on these items, look what happens. They take me back to where I was at the time I wrote them. Yeah. Having done that one, I can check it off my list and I can hit refresh results and it will now be gone from my list. Using tags in OneNote and tagging illustrations, images or text that I've written into OneNote has allowed me to create a tag summary. What is this tag summary? It's actually, it's actually a live to-do list. So OneNote lets me create a live to-do list. Now, if you're more broadly working in Office 365 and you've got Microsoft to do, well, guess what? We can get these things into in, into to do as well. How would we do that? Well, the way I would do that is instead of using tags, we would lasso an item and we would then, instead of tagging it, turn it into an Outlook task. Now, I like the custom Outlook tasks. Yeah. I like the custom Outlook tasks. Why do I like the custom Outlook tasks? Well, when the task opens, and I'll have this task open in a second here for you. It sometimes takes a few seconds to get that. Yeah, here's the task, it's opened. You can see here I've got a hyperlink. You can also see that, I, that the task has tried to OCR what I wrote, and so I can edit that. Custom Outlook tasks I love because they let me turn them into the most or the best possible task you can have. And I think the best task you can have is one that you can assign to someone else. So I hit the assign task button and I put their email address in here and I set a start date and a finish date on this particular task and I send that task to them. Now Brett can accept or reject that task at his peril, uh, but I've now, and if I hit refresh results here, um, this might be a little bit slow because I'm presenting, but you can actually see here that it's in my life to-do list in OneNote. It's also now in Microsoft to-do, and it's also in my task list in Outlook. So what's the significance of this for our creative creativity and also for our workflow around meetings? Well, the significance is that I've created content here for a meeting into a OneNote page without duplicating effort. No copying and pasting through the meeting details button. It's in my OneNote page. 
I've set up my meeting effectively and I've used digital ink, digital pen to take effective meeting notes. Yeah. Then I'll be able to turn my handwritten notes into shareable, formal action items without duplicating any content. Can you see that? Would that make more effective meetings for you? Now, tell me what's more important, because a lot of people, when I mention this to them, they go, hang on a second. I would I, I would not want to share my handwriting out. I would just want to type to, to do type text. Well, I've already shown you you can do that. You can spend the time uh, transcribing these notes into text and sending them out. But I want to challenge that notion that you don't want to share your handwriting. Why? What's wrong with sharing your handwriting? Oh, it's messy. Well, join the club. What's more important, do you think, that this is neat and type text or that it's shared? Shared beats formal every single time. Learn to share your informal content. It inspires the creativity in others as well as yourself. Keep your handwritten notes on file. They take you back to your memories. They are a link to your thinking patterns and where you were at a given point in time. Handwritten notes are critical to human creativity. Bringing handwritten content, sketches and illustrations into meetings is a great way to make them more creative and more productive. Now that's fantastic, but today's the first day I'm learning about this. What about my diaries of information right? that I've got that I've been writing notes for years and I've got a shelf full of my diaries or a drawer full of paper folders that have got my handwritten notes into them. What's the hope for me? Well, here's the hope for you. Your historic paper based notes can become digital and here's how. I'm going to use search in OneNote to show you how this works and I like to show you two results through search. In search in OneNote, I'm going to search for the word anything. Now, I want to use this to show two things to you. Firstly, anything is searchable in OneNote. Can you see on this page this yellow handwriting that's been found? My handwriting, as messy as it is, is searchable in OneNote. Not only is it searchable, and just to prove my point, I've already shown this to you, it's convertible. Now, another critical point for you here is what we call ambiguous search. You see, did I write anything or does that look like everything to you? I think I wrote everything, but you know what? Near enough is good enough for handwriting search in OneNote. That isn't the same when it comes to text. So I get some benefit of leaving my content in handwriting. Ambiguous search means it'll think it'll give me results when I search OneNote that are near enough to what it's looking for. And that's a great benefit to finding things. Uh, by the way, I've got I've got about um, 16 years worth of notes open here that I'm searching at any given time in OneNote. But on to my point, I want to show you a second point here. <clears throat> Can you see what's been found on this page? Can you see that? That's handwriting. Well, let me zoom in a little bit here for you. That's a photo of a printed piece of paper that had handwriting on it. So the handwriting was already in the picture. I took the picture, I put the picture into OneNote. The content has become searchable. So your paper-based diaries, if you photograph that content and put that content into OneNote, it will become searchable. Now, key point, the handwriting must be horizontal, all right? It's gotta be horizontal. OneNote can't read vertical handwriting or on an angle. It's got to be horizontal. So make sure your images go in horizontally. Well, that's great. Now I can search my handwritten notes, but what else could I do with them? Can I take them to another digital format? Absolutely, you can, because I can right click on my images and I can copy the text from pictures. This might be a document, a handwritten page, or even a whiteboard that you've taken a picture of. I can copy the text from it I can go to another blank Word document here and we can simply paste that content into Word. Now let's split screen this again for impact. All right. Here is the content from a printed, uh, from a photo. All right. And here is even the transcription of the ink. You'll obviously have to format and proofread, but this is still significantly better than 
retyping your content. So we've covered off a few things around ink in OneNote and taking handwritten content and turning it into digital formats and using digital ink to enhance our note taking ability and, our, and the effectiveness and creativity of our meetings. So I want to come back to my original questions for you and I, and I want to step into a couple of things here for you. Let's talk about these topics that we raised at the beginning here. So would you like to improve your memory? 10 to 60 percent recall, better recall when you handwrite what you want to remember. So how do I improve my memory? Well, you start writing. But if I want to make sure that I'm improving my memory and my productivity, I start writing into OneNote. How can I boost my feelings of well-being? How does handwriting and drawing boost my feelings of well-being? Well, studies show that journaling, uh, morning notes they're sometimes called, writing down your emotions before you fall asleep, they all have positive effects on my well-being. Typing does not do this, handwriting does. Um, handwriting in one study was shown to improve physical healing. People who wrote their, their emotions out by hand improved their physical healing capabilities. The, the benefits to mental health of journaling, to slowing down our minds, to thinking deeply and to writing out our thoughts are increasingly being talked about. How do we boost our feelings of well-being? Start writing into OneNote. Start writing full stop, but even better than that, start writing into OneNote. How do we capture our ideas more effectively? Write them. Where? Into OneNote. The writing process helps you verify, test and build your ideas. It helps you move those ideas to where they need to get to to become outcomes. And in one study, people achieve their goals 42% more often than the control group simply by writing their goals down. Not even taking further action other than writing them down, physically writing them down. So what will my goal setting and achieving be like if I not only write my goals down, I start to work on them with illustrations, digital ink and creativity through the human mind and its number one creativity tool, the pen. All of these things put together with a digital pen and OneNote will move me towards becoming more productive. And if I have one message for you, it is force yourself to break away from the distraction and the shallow thinking of a keyboard and begin to deeply think with a digital pen in OneNote and learn how to turn that into more vibrant, more creative, more effective processes and content for you and for your team. So I want to step into some of the questions that have come up here now for you, and I'll take questions for as long as I need to today. I know this session is scheduled to finish at one o'clock. I also want to give you a, a plug to what we do uh, at the end of this session as well. I'll, I'll give you ways to connect with me again personally. Um, and if you have any other questions that I haven't addressed and you can connect with our team and our creative team, we produce a lot of YouTube videos. Our YouTube channel is an um, Oz Tablet PC, so OZ Tablet PC, but we focus on teaching people to use technology for their benefit. Um, and uh, to that end, you know, we are firmly of the belief that the the unplanned use of technology never produces a productive result. And now more than ever, it is up to us as individuals to take charge of how we'll interact with technology. If you want to become productive and if you want to have a healthy and happier life, you need to do this. OK, so I've got some questions here I'm going to step into. Kerry Taylor asks if you've got a touchscreen laptop, I'm looking for a stylus. Now, what you need to understand about the different types of devices on the market, right, is that there's different types of touch screens and different types of digitizer screens. There's essentially two major types of touch, capacitive and resistive, and they simply work with your finger, right? So resistive touch means you push a screen uh, and it, it simply uh, reacts to your push on the screen. Capacitive touch is what all of our modern phones have. It reacts to the surface area of your finger. You can get a capacitive stylus. Uh, here's one right here. It's a soft, where's the camera? Here it is. It's a soft tip, often on a pen like this. That is a capacitive stylus. It will work on my Surface device, right? It replicates your finger. Not the best pen experience. If you have a touch-only device, you can do some ink work, 
But realistically, you need to invest in a digital device that has a digitizer screen. The Surface Pen, the Dell um, uh, pen enabled devices, HP, Lenovo, Fujitsu, they all have them. You can get rugged versions of these devices. Active digitizer displays where the pen works when it's not even touching the screen. So you can see here that the pen's hovering, top right hand corner. When I touch, it draws. When I hover, I can see a cursor. Yeah, and, and I can say this because uh, it's, it's what, what I do on a daily basis is research this. If you do not have a digitizer device, you have the wrong device. I'm sorry to tell you that. Next time, when and maybe you didn't get a choice in your device. I'm sorry about that as well. But if you want to be genuinely productive, you need to have a device with a digital pen. If you want to tap into the creative power of the human mind, you must have a device with a digital pen. Uh, Kay asked me, uh, how can we share planner content with OneNote and vice versa? That's a question I'm going to take on notice um, and come back to you on, because I actually haven't done a lot of that. One thing we do do, and this relates to Teams, and maybe this might be a solution for you. We make sure that our OneNote notebooks are in our Teams environment. And, and for me, we and when I teach Teams use, you must have a OneNote notebook in your team. Did you know that when you create a Microsoft team, you have automatically created a OneNote notebook? And most people don't know that, and they certainly haven't pinned it as a tab inside the Teams environment. So what I like about OneNote in Teams is it's the way to bring our ink based content into that text based messaging environment. So OneNote inside Teams is probably the way I would look at bringing Planner and OneNote integration together. Anonymous asked me, can we export sketches to Word or PowerPoint? Um, you can simply copy and paste content uh, from one medium to another. And if I copy that, for example, I'm just copying the ink and I'm pasting that into any format, including PowerPoint or Word. So absolutely, let's go to Word and let's just simply paste this content into, oops, keyboard, thank you. Let's paste, <laughs> let's do Control-V. So I've just pasted that, uh, I've pasted ink text obviously, but that could be an image. So yes, I can export by copying, pasting my images into any other of the Office programs. Have you converted handwritten paper into a Word document page? So, uh, Pankaj, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, pronunciation of your name there, but yes, I showed you how to take a photo of handwritten content in your device and then through to OneNote, bring that into um, a digital content by extracting it in OneNote and pasting it into, uh, into OneNote or into another format. <laughs> Thomas, your question is the age old question about device selection. And do you know what? Here's the way to answer that question. Without a digital pen, your people are wasting a minimum of eight hours per week at work because they're using physical paper. Did you know that the average uh, office worker spends one hour a day using a pen? Around about 30% spend three hours per day using a pen. How much duplication of effort is that resulting on in if they don't have a, a device with a pen? Two weeks per year searching through paper-based notes. So if you want a business case, instead of spending 500 bucks on a laptop, go and spend 1200 bucks on a Surface, $700 price difference, how much improved productivity will it take to get back that $700? Yeah, so Thomas, I hope that's an answer for you. The business case is compelling and easy. If you want proof, be the guinea pig and say, I'll be the test on this boss. I'll, I'll prove the productivity. Please get me a surface with a pen and I'll prove to you how much time we're going to save as an office. Let me just say one thing to you about that actually. Uh, and, and this is why our YouTube and ch channel is important and why I'm available to reach out to you after this session. I've made you aware of some things you can do today, but the only way you can be good at them is by keeping on finding out about them and by practice, practicing them. We do not do enough training and we certainly don't practice enough our digital skills. Yeah. And I like to talk about this this way. Information workers are the only people in any job today allowed to touch tools without certification of competency. So, so my background is actually in construction. I'm actually a builder. I was not allowed to touch the circular saw or the nailing gun until I was trained on using it. 
but you're allowed to touch Excel, Word, OneNote, Windows 10, any your device without any training whatsoever on the huge assumption that you are a productive computer user. Nobody is good at anything without coaching and practice. So you might think you're a good technology user and no doubt you may well be, but what could you benefit from through regular coaching and practicing on your digital skills? Yeah. Um, thanks, Nadia has put in the chat a link to our YouTube channel as well. So I appreciate that, Nadia. Uh, but the other question here is, is there a Kanban or Scrum board or how can you make your own simple three columns with sticky notes? Um, the very simple way in OneNote to do that might be to uh, insert tables into a page. So I can put my cursor down here and I can insert a table and I can make that table look like whatever I like. Under the drawing tab though, you know, we can actually draw either just informal shapes, but we can also draw more formal shapes and move them around. So these are objects and I can simply lasso these and move them around my OneNote page. So this is one of the benefits of digital ink as well, that everything I put on here is able to be reconfigured, to be moved around. So yep, I can put ink inside that and then I can just last through that one page, one image and move around my page. Another key feature here for this type of work, if you're gonna use this as a Kanban board or a scrum board, is the ability to have page versions under history. We can actually see versions of our page going back over time as well. Another critical feature here. Uh, and I could spend the next week talking to you about OneNote because it's my favourite topic. It's the favourite tool of the world. Uh, it's my best tool, my favourite tool in the world. And I think that OneNote is the most underrated tool in Office. And that comes to life when you use a digital pen. So to summarise what we're talking about today and to finish off, and if there's any more questions, I'll stick around. But we're saying that categorically, human creativity requires a pen, either to write or to illustrate and draw. The best digital place to do that is Microsoft OneNote. Why? Well, I've got a record and a backup of my notes. I can search them, I can convert them, I can publish them to other mediums. And from a work scenario, I can share my genuine creativity with others. So go and test it out for yourselves. Grab a digital pen, start writing into OneNote. Please break away from your keyboards. Think more deeply, be happier at work and get more done. Uh, thanks for your time. I really appreciate that. I'm going to stick around and answer any more questions. If you want to engage with me, please do so through the questions. Um, my contact page, if you like, so here's my details. You can reach me on Twitter. You can reach us on YouTube. My email address is here as well. Uh, Matthew at tabletpc.com.au and at Matt Gilbertson on Twitter. Look forward to hearing from you. Hopefully we can continue this conversation feedback, good, bad or otherwise, I'm willing to take it and uh, have a good afternoon. Thanks. Thanks very much for joining me. Thank you, Thank you for that. And for those who may be coming up with a couple of questions, I'm going to take you through some of the events that are upcoming at Microsoft. So yeah, I can just quickly share my screen with everyone. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Nadia. Yep, go. I've got one more question here. Can I, can I answer that, Nadia, or not? Oh, yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Sorry, Anonymous says, would you recommend or suggest one how OneNote can replace mind map software? And so very quickly, yes, absolutely. I showed you a mind map before. Um, and that here's an example of it here. Um, I have a problem uh, conceptually with the idea that mind maps can be part of a formal tool because I think that mind mapping is all about the informal. And this is a way that we informally mind map, right? And I can teach you how to use links and other things to bring other content to this. But if you're, as soon as you bring formality to a mind map, it's no longer a mind map in my world. So I, we, we use OneNote as our mind mapping tool. So hopefully it's an answer for you, Anonymous. And um, yeah, so I'm gonna stop sharing for you, Nadia, and I'll let you go on with, um, with what you want. No worries, no worries. Thanks, thanks for that, Matthew. Thank All righty, it's in live. Mm -hmm. Um, so thanks to those who joined us today. If you do want to see the events that we do have up and coming, you can visit our meetup page at meetup.com slash Microsoft Reactor Sydney and also follow our Twitter page as well at MSFT Reactor. Um, there was a question in the Q&A about the session being recorded and yes, it is. And you'll be able to find it up on our YouTube channel within the next day or so. 
Um, so I've popped that link in the Q&A chat. I'll also post the recording in the event meetup page as well. Um, if you have any questions about the Microsoft Reactor or you're keen to get involved with the Reactor as well, or just have some questions or anything you want to run by us, feel free to email us at reactorset at microsoft.com. Um, I have also put another link in the Q&A. Um, it's a survey link. Feel free to fill that out um, just to give us some feedback on the session. If you'd like to see more of Matt's sessions, um, let us know in our survey and you can also use the event code 11787. It will prompt you for that. It's just so we know which uh, session the feedback is coming back from. So up and coming this week, we have a session called What's New with Common Data Service and Microsoft Project Oakdale. So this is going to be deep diving into the differences and all that kind of stuff. So we'll be doing that this Thursday night. We have another session called Dashboards and Analytics for Office 365. So this is going to look at building and rich da dashboards and looking at quickly how to build and analyze some data while using Power BI, Microsoft Graph and Activity API as well. And on the 17th of September, we've got a express uh, session that we are running called Intro to Microsoft Learn and how to prepare for, certica for certifications with an expert. So we'll be joined by Lisa Crosby, who is a Microsoft MVP for business applications. She'll be taking you through what is Microsoft Learn, how you can utilize the content to pass any of the certification exams. Um, so we'll be running the session at 10 o'clock on the 17th, and we'll be also running another one at the end of the month at 6 p.m. if you do miss that session. Uh, so I wanted to say thank you, but I think something's come up. Oh, there we go. We've got a really nice piece of feedback for you, Matt. <laughs> Saying excellent presentation. My special thanks. Really happy today. <laughs> thank you. Made me happy too. That's nice. Thank you very much. That's awesome. So Matt and I will be probably hanging around for another minute or so. If you do have any last minute questions, if not, thank you for joining and we will see you next time. Does it look like there's any more questions? That's good. It means that people are off to their lunch or breakfast or whatever, <laughs> whatever their, their next cup of coffee. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, and we will see you next time. Bye.